What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example, still dealing with completing a square. So we gotta complete the square on these quadratics here, find the maximum or minimum point. So notice in this particular case, we're actually gonna be working with decimals and fractions. So the algebra is gonna be a little bit more intense, but it's gonna be the exact same process as when we were working with just integers. And I wanted to go over this just in case maybe you run into it and so you could be more confident if you do run into these kinds of expressions, whether on a test or in your homework. Now, in the previous videos, we also sketched the graph and I'm not gonna be sketching the graph in this particular video. I wanna focus more so on the completing the square process, just practicing that. But if you do wanna sketch the graph, you can. It's gonna be the exact same thing. You can get the y-intercepts here in the standard form. You can get the vertex once we uh, convert it to vertex form, and then you could just join those points. But I'm just gonna focus on completing the square. So let's start off with this first quadratic here. Sorry, this is 1.7. And then we got plus 7.2. So what is the first step? Well, notice that we have an A value in front of the X squared. So we have to factor out that A value. And then when we do that, we factor it out of these first two. So what we would do is we would divide this by 0 0.2, divide this by 0 0.2. So we would end up with X squared minus, now 1.7 divided by 0 0.2, if you do that in your calculator, you would end up with 8.5x. And then over here, we still leave the 7.2 as is. And now at this point in the completing the square process, what you wanna do is you wanna take that B value for the quadratic inside the bracket. You wanna take that B value divided by two, and then you wanna square it in order to get a value where we can add it here and then create a perfect square trinomial. So this would end up being what? Negative 4.25, that's gonna be squared. And then when you square this, you'd end up getting approximately 18.06. I think it's 18.0625. I'll just round it to two decimal places. So what would happen, the next line, we would rewrite this. And then what we do, we bring this value, we add it here but we can't just add in a random value, so we're also gonna have to subtract it in order to not change this uh, expression. So notice that that's just zero, so we're adding more onto the expression, but we're not changing it. Okay, so then, next step, you wanna take this outside of the bracket, but when you do that, you gotta multiply by whatever is in front right there. So the next line you'd end up with 0.2 x squared minus 8.5 x plus 18.06. And then negative 18.06 times 0.2 would give us negative 3.61 approximately. And then we got the plus 7.2 at the end there. And then now this is gonna be a perfect square trinomial. Remember that what happens here in this bracket is always gonna be x, this same sign, so it's a negative in this case, and then it's just gonna be half of that 8.5, which is this 4.25 over here. We're gonna square that. And then negative 3.61 plus 7.2, you can net those out. That would give us positive 3.59, like that. Right, and so notice that we now have that same quadratic, this quadratic here in vertex form. And so what would be the maximum or minimum point? Well, first off, notice that we have a positive A value, meaning that the quadratic is opening up. So we know that we're gonna have a minimum value. Now, as I mentioned in previous videos, sometimes they'll give the minimum value as the entire vertex point, which is what I'm gonna do. Sometimes they'll just give it as the Y value of the vertex, but I'm gonna put the entire vertex point. So it's gonna be positive 4.25, the opposite sign there, and then 3.59, right? So that ends up being the answer for 
part A. And then moving on to part B, so we got negative 1.2x squared plus 3.9x minus 4.6. So exact same thing, notice that there's an A value there, so we want to take out that A value. It's a negative in this case, so these two signs are going to change. So dividing this by negative 1.2, what we took out, we're just left with an x squared, right? We always want to just have an x squared at that point. And then over here, 3.9 divided by negative 1.2, positive 3.9 divided by negative 1.2 would give us a negative 3.25 value right there. And then we got the x, and then we got the negative 4.6 at the end. And again, if you want to do a quick check, you could take that negative 1.2, redistribute it, in the bracket, make sure you have that initial expression, those initial two expressions, so you know that you did the factoring correctly here. And then from here, what we do is we take the b value, the quadratic inside the bracket, remember not this 3.9, but this 3.25, uh, negative 3.25, but it actually doesn't matter whether it's negative or positive because after we divide it by two and then square it, this value is always going to end up being positive. So we'd end up with negative 1.625 uh, and then that's going to be squared and then that's going to give us approximately 2.64. So then we could take that value and remember we got to add it and then subtract it in that bracket so we'd end up with x squared minus 3.25x plus 2.64 minus 2.64 and then we got the minus 4.6 at the end. And then this negative 2.64 we want to take outside of the bracket. But remember, when we do that, we've got to multiply it by what's in front. So it's multiplying it by negative 1.2 in this case. So the next line would end up being negative 1.2 x squared minus 3.25x plus 2.64. And then negative 2.64 times uh, negative 1.2 that would give you approximately 3.17. And then we got the minus 4.6 right there. And then over here, now that we got these three terms, that's always going to be a perfect square trinomial. We'd end up with x minus half of that value, which would be 1.625. It's actually the value that you get right there. And then that's going to be squared. And then 3.17 minus 4.6, that would net out to approximately negative 1.43. And so now we have that same quadratic in vertex form. And so we can get the vertex. Now they want a maximum or minimum. Notice that the A value, same A value in the vertex form, it's negative, meaning that the parabola it's opening down, so we know we're dealing with a maximum point. And then the entire vertex is going to end up being 1.625 and negative 1.43. Remember, this sign always changes over there. Right? So that ends up being the max point. Then moving on to part C over here. So now we're going to be dealing with fractions, and the algebra is going to be a lot more intense here. I'm going to try to Stay with fractions the whole time. Now your teacher may allow you to convert these to decimals and then you could just follow the process that we did before. But just in case they don't, if you get something like this and then they expect the final answer to be in fractions, that's what I'm going to do here. So it's going to be a little bit more intense. But again, the same overall process is going to apply. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this 1 over 3 from these two terms. So we'd end up with x squared minus. Now what would we be left with here? So here's where the algebra gets more intense. So we'll have to take the 1 over 12 and divide it by what we took out, which is the 1 over 3. Right? We're always dividing by that greatest common factor we took out. So this ends up being 1 over 12 times 3 over 1, if we flip the fraction, which would end up being 3 over 12, which would give us 1 over 4. So over here, we end up with minus 1 over 4x, uh, and then we close that bracket, and then we'd end up with 1 over 4 at the end right there. And so that 1 over 4 is going to go here, so we end up with 1 over 4x, close the bracket, and then we'd end up with plus 1 over 4. So if we take this 1 over 3, redistribute it, in the bracket, 
we'd end up with those first two expressions. Now what's the next step? Well, remember that we always take the b value that's left in the bracket. We divide it by 2, but when I'm dividing this fraction by 2, I'm just going to write divide it by 2. It's like dividing by 2 over 1 versus writing it as 1 over 4 divided by 2. That's a little bit more complex looking, right? So I'm just going to do that still in the bracket, and then we have to square that. And so what is 1 over 4 divided by 2? That's like multiplying it by 1 over 2. If we flip this fraction, still squaring it. So this would end up being 1 over 8, squaring it. And then remember, when we have a fraction to an exponent, we could take the numerator to that exponent and then the denominator to that exponent. So we'd end up with 1 over 64. So that 1 over 64 is going to go here. So we're going to end up with 1 over 3x squared minus 1 over 4x uh, plus 1 over 64 minus 1 over 64. And then we got the plus 1 over 4 at the end right there. All right. So as I mentioned, this is going to be a lot more, um, a lot more complex here in terms of the algebra. But again, the same overall process is applying. So now we got to take the negative 1 over 64 out. So we've got to multiply it by what's in front, which is this 1 over 3. So let's do this on the side. What's 1 over 3? times negative 1 over 64. Well, we just multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. So that would end up being negative 1. And then 3 times 64 would give us 192. So we end up with 1 over 3 x squared minus 1 over 4 x plus 1 over 64. Took this out, multiplied by 1 over 3, we end up with negative 192, and then we got the plus 1 over 4, like that. All right, so we're making progress, and now all that's left to do is to factor this, and we know that that's going to be a perfect square trinomial, and then net those out. So remember this over here, what it's going to end up being is we got the 1 over 3 on the outside, and then you're going to end up with x minus because we have a minus here. If this was positive, that would be positive. It's basically going to be half of this value. And we already took the 104 before divided by 2. We end up with 1 over 8 in that bracket before squaring it. So we know this is going to end up being 1 over 8. That's going to be squared. Uh, and then this over here, let's actually do it on the side. So negative 1 over 192. Now to get a common denominator here, we could take the 4 multiply it by 48 to get a 192, meaning the top we have to multiply by 48, right? 48 over 192 is the exact same as 1 over 4, and then negative 1 plus 48, that would give us positive 47. So we'd end up with positive 47 over 192, like that. And so that ends up being the vertex form, keeping that format of fractions. All right, so a lot more complex if you're dealing with fractions. And if your teacher expects you to do that algebra, that's the way you're going to have to do it. So you got to be really careful with your steps. And so we end up having, because it's an A value that's positive, it's opening up. So we end up with a minimum point. And the minimum point, the entire vertex is going to be positive 1 over A, right? We always flip that sign. And then 47 over 190. Two. And then finally, moving on to part D. So another expression with fractions. So let's be super careful with the algebra here. So I'll start over here. I feel like I'm going to need a lot of room again over here with the algebra. And then we got plus 7 over 5. Okay, so what is the first step? First step, we take out this negative 1 over 10, right, from the first two expressions. So we'd end up with x squared. We're always going to end up with x squared here. And then we got negative 1 over 4, let's do this on the side, divided by negative 1 over 10. That's what we're, that's, um, what we're trying to find that goes over here, right? So notice the sign's going to change. Negative divided by negative is going to end up being a positive. So this is going to end up being a positive here. But let's do the whole algebra. So we'd end up with negative 1 over 4 times 10 over negative 1. The negative 1's cancel out. We end up with 10 over 4, which ends up being 5 over 2. Okay, negative 1 over 4 divided by negative 1 over 10. 
gives us 5 over 2. So this would be 5 over 2x. Close that bracket, then we got the plus 7 over 5 at the end. Then what's the next step? We take this 5 over 2, we divide it by 2, which is like dividing by 2 over 1, and then we got to square that value. So we'd end up with 5 over 2 times 1 over 2, squaring that. So we'd end up with 5 over 4, squaring that. That would be 25 over 16, like that. Right, and let's remember this five over four because that's what's gonna be the term in that factor perfect square trinomial. It's always gonna be half of this value, right? And five over two divided by two or multiplying it by one over two gives us five over four. So I'm actually gonna write that on the side there. Uh, let's erase this. Now this 25 over 16, we gotta put that inside the, uh, the bracket. Let me just make sure that Yes, it looks all good to me. So, um, negative 1 over 10, we got x squared plus 5 over 2x, like that. And then we do plus 25 over 16 minus 25 over 16. And then we still got the plus 7 over 5 at the end. Then what is the next step? We take this out of the bracket, but then we got to multiply it by negative 1 over 10. So we'd end up with negative 1 over 10, x squared plus 5 over 2x plus 25 over 16. Negative 25 over 16 times negative 1 over 10. So this would give us what? This would be positive. And then 5 goes into 10 twice and 25 5 times. So we'd end up with positive 5 over 32 on the outside there. And then we got the plus 7 over 5 like that. Right? Negative 25 over 16 times negative 1 over 10 gives us positive uh, 5 over 32. Let me just make sure. Yes. That works out. And then from here, what we do is this bracket, that's going to end up being a perfect square trinomial. So we'd end up with negative 1 over 10. And here we'd end up with x plus, because this is a plus, and then half of this, the 5 over 2 divided by 2. Remember, that's that 5 over 4 that we got before. So that would end up being 5 over 4 over here. And then that's going to be squared. And then 5 over 32 plus 7 over 5. Let's get a common denominator here, multiply this by 5, multiply this by 5, multiply this by 32, multiply this by 32. So we'd end up with um, 25 over 160 plus 7 times 32 would give us 224. That's going to be over 160. 25 plus 24 would give us 249. So we'd end up with plus 249 over 160. And then that fraction there, it doesn't simplify any further. The numerator and denominator don't have a common factor. All right, so that ends up being this quadratic, but in vertex form. They're both the exact same thing. If you took this uh, grafted in Desmos, took this grafted in Desmos, should be the exact same graph. Hopefully, I don't think I missed any... Um, or I don't think I made any, any mistakes here with the algebra. Okay, and then notice that the a value is negative, so it's a graph that's opening down, so we're dealing with a maximum point, and then the vertex is going to be negative 5 over 4. On that same Desmos graph, you should see a vertex of negative 5 over 4 and 249 over 160. It may give it to you in decimals, so you could just take the decimals of those in your calculator. But nevertheless, it should be that vertex right there. Right, so that ends up being the final answer for part D. So again, when you're dealing with decimals and fractions, especially fractions, and if your teacher requires to maintain the entire fraction format throughout the whole completing the square process, then it gets really tedious, but nevertheless, it is some good algebra practice.